and welcome back to Let's Talk Shop. We're here for episode three with Sasha from Cheeky Zebra. We are documenting in this series uh, her wholesale journey. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> and today we are going to talk about the initial steps that she ta- took getting started. We talked about selling last time and mindset. Um, we covered in the first episode that the first time around that Sasha wholesaled and why she was so against it, it didn't go to pl- quite to plan. And she didn't really make that much money. So obviously this time around, you wanted to avoid that. Yeah, definitely wanted to actually make a lot of money this time around. <laughs> so I think the first thing, one of the first things we did was obviously work on your pricing. So instead of you know, having the scenario where the retailer told you what they wanted to pay, you actually have a set price now? <laughs> yeah. Um. So that process was really, it sounds really obvious and I'm sure it is really obvious, but when it's your own business, you can just like, you don't think about it that way. So basically what you force me to do is be, is force, I always make her sound awful. She's actually so lovely. <laughs> um, is you got me to break down like the raw quote. But basically we started, the starting point was working out how much it cost me. And yeah. including labour within that, which was really important. You were very yeah. keen. I was like, oh, but I don't need to pay myself. You're like, no, put labour in there. Because eventually, if you become more successful, you might be hiring somebody else to do it for you. Yeah, exactly. And even though your nan helps you now and your mom and <laughs> everyone for free. auntie, like, uh, they're not going to do that forever. Yeah, they get to a point where you have to stop paying people. <laughs> like, um uh, and I think it's really important that you then don't have to go through the process again. Of course, we have to review our prices every now and then because material costs change and all that sort of stuff. But we also did look about outsourcing. So you, Sasha prints um, to order, but we did also look like if wholesale grew to a certain point, what it would cost to outsource the printing for wholesale um so that you know that you have those that we have a backup there. yeah like worst case if we got like hopefully get so big that there's so many orders we knew that we could afford to outsource it if needed yeah and also it's a bit quicker because then you have a faster printer and stuff like that right? yeah although it was really annoying actually because i think we found that the per- the place we were looking at their lead times to do an order was 10 working days yeah which is obviously something you have to factor in especially with something like greeting greeting cards with it being such a fast moving product or you would have to keep your wholesale range in stock yeah so it would, it's changing your business model slightly if wholesale becomes that um, successful but price wise it wasn't that different so I think it was like good you know you can afford it yeah it was actually like yeah price wise complete almost the same I yeah think. yeah which was a, I think a good starting point I always love starting with pricing because so much confidence knowing that you're going to make money on the sale well yeah and also what of the exercises you did was you reverse engineered it for me because I was so self-conscious about like always thinking like I want the customer to make money I want the shop to make money from this that we worked out like the art so our my we can say like my cost per card is like cost one pound ten a card and for wholesale uh, price for wholesale price and our retail uh, a recommended retail price is two pound fifty mm-hmm. and so the exercise that Therese did with me was like we worked it out and you're like oh actually they're making good margin and actually to the point that we even worked out that even if they didn't sell all the cards they brought which I'm very sure they would they would still be in profit and that gave me a huge sense of relief like I knew financially that I'm actually selling things that one people will like which I already knew but I'm they will still make money I think it comes to back me. to that thing that you don't want to like trick them yeah so it's the same basically my this is what we we're saying in the last episode like your insecurities will just keep showing up and yeah. it was the same insecurity for me so that did make me feel a bit better to know that like the pricing is great for everybody it's fair for everyone yeah and that's important and then you had to do go away and do a catalogue and what we started with the catalogue was you have over 900 cards I have over a thousand cards. Oh, over a thousand cards. <laughs> yes. Yeah, don't don't undersell how many cards I have on my work I've done. Uh, so we needed to define that range because, of course, some of those cards are so niche yeah. that they might not necessarily have the longevity in a retail shop, or they be so niche that you know it is something that you would go and search for on the internet. But you wouldn't necessarily maybe. It's hard for a card shop or like 
a gift shop to keep such a well off on the range. Oh yeah, like they they wouldn't make sense for them to stop yeah. stuff so niche, which was really helpful because basically what you said to me was like, because I was like, I don't know where to start. And then I was doing that thing that I think a lot of people do with their wholesale catalogs is you just become too perfectionist and you're just procrastinating and wasting time. Yeah. These are my words again, <laughs> not Teresa's. <laughs> um, and so what you kind of did is you were like, cool, what are the core ranges that wholesale shops needed? So I think together we worked out like birthday, anniversary, you know, the basics that everybody yeah. needs. And then I was like, but I don't know what to include. And you were like, okay, well, what are your best sellers? And let's just put your best sellers in. And you yeah. gave me a limit. I think you were like no more than like 20 in a range or like 30 or whatever it was for different ranges, depending on the size. And then that was it. And then we, but what was really helpful is we went through exactly what a wholesale catalog needs to include. Yeah. Which I didn't know. So like your terms and conditions, which is something I would have never put any thought into before, to be honest. And I realized- Well, no, because you let your customers stipulate <laughs> <the person. laughs> There were no terms and conditions. It was like, whatever you want. <laughs> so so yes and I, I think it was also we did the balance because you do cheeky and then you do some that are little you do a small range that is rude yeah there's, I would say like five percent like but you do a lot quite a big range of cheeky yes uh hence cheeky cheeky zebra <laughs> <laughs> um so we kind of went through and defined what we thought was the balance so that you're not because you didn't you don't want to be like a rude card publisher. Yeah, like the, that is the thing for some, right? Yeah, but we're not that. So I think the problem is sometimes people think we're ruder than we are. And it was finding a balance to kind of explain that we're mainly cheeky. But if you do want something really rude, we can service that rather than giving the wrong message and making people think like, oh, they're just a rude card brand, which isn't what we are. And that is something that I struggle to kind of make clear, I think. Yeah, and I think that was really interesting. And then what we decided actually was that the number of people that would want to have the the rude stuff is probably quite small. So we decided that that's just going to be on your website. And if they want, if they're a card shop that wants that, they that could, they could still have it. But we didn't include it in your catalogue. Yes. Um, and that is it was just knowing what to include in the catalogue made it become less of this big scary thing because it was like oh I just need to pick these cards I need to include this information and it needs to not look awful and and it's really it. easy to buy from now I think it's so much easier it's really well we'll put some links to the new catalog and I'll see if I can find a photo of the old one like when I just winged it myself maybe we try to find that and I'll pop it on my Instagram yeah because like the difference is insanity um and bear in mind guys like I did still get sales from the old catalog which is proof that, like, you don't want to wait for things to be perfect. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's so much better now. It's, like, night and day, but it's, like, you don't always have to wait. For sure. And, you know, to get your first stockist, even if you didn't have a catalogue, a lot of people don't have a catalogue when they get their first stockist. Or we should just also say that a catalogue and a line sheet, you don't need both. And a line sheet is more like a simplified version of your catalogue. Someone needs but to such a range this. is really big. Like, honestly, things, and again, I didn't come from this world. I know what a line sheet was. She kept saying this word line sheet, and I was like, I don't even know what that means. And then you broke it all down to me. But, like, there was a lot of things I didn't understand what they were initially. Yeah, I think people throw all these terms around. There is a um, glossary or whatever you would call it, jargon. Buster. Buster on my website. Uh, and there's also a in the freebie section a link to like a free um, line sheet template in Canva. Honestly, one of the best things about working with you genuinely was just all the templates. <laughs> Honestly, whatever there is, Therese has a template for it. If it's like, oh, it's my third email to a supplier and I don't want to sound too cute, she has a template. Like, there's just endless <laughs> amounts of like resources. Uh, important to say that you have to personalize it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm like, not. I gave you templates, but they're not like, you know, I am not that funny. <laughs> I think she's funny, but not on purpose. But like, you know, I can't be funny in a template because it's aimed for so many different types of businesses. So you definitely have to put your own spin on it. Yeah. <laughs> like, but it's really helpful to have a template because then, well, I don't know. I always find it so much easier to edit something and make it your own than it is to write something from scratch. Yeah. Like, it, it gives you a structure. Which I think is really important. So, yeah, we'll try to share your old catalogue versus your new mm -hmm. one. And 
you know, what you did, it should show what uh, you didn't put into it. And I think I'd also like to say that I didn't design my catalogue and I have no shame around it. <laughs> my, one of my really, I just basically use my friend, I pay this friend, so that's new for me, I pay this person. But um, one of my close friends, she's just really good at InDesign, like through her job anyway. And she made the catalogue for me because it took her way faster than it took me. And what we did is, I think she did it really cleverly actually, where she linked it to Excel. So I gave her an Excel sheet of all my codes, names, and um, a folder of all my product images. And she managed to automate the whole thing. Yeah. And so now, every time I need to update the catalog, I just need to update an Excel sheet and send her a link to the folders. And she'll press a button and it will automatically pull it all in. Um. So I would just say, like, don't have any shame around if, like, you know, design isn't your natural thing or InDesign isn't your natural thing to, like, just get some help. Yeah. That or, like, use Canva. Because yeah. you don't have to do it in InDesign. That's such a good point. Like, you know, if, if, if you, I mean, you might listen to this and even be like, what, what the hell is InDesign? Like, you don't have to. Canva, on the other hand, if you don't know about it, it is life changing. Yeah. Like, Canva is like um, an online software where you can drag and drop and design things. I use it if you follow me on Instagram to do all my like carousel posts and stuff. And it's so easy and it's free. Oh, well, I can't really argue with that. No, you can't. Yeah, forget in design, <laughs> back that up. <laughs> no, if you want to automate things, you need, like, something else. I think it, like, all, like, it will depend, like, how many products and stuff you are as to yeah. how much of a difficult task that is or isn't. Yeah, I mean, even with us defining the range, there is, like, a few hundred probably. Yeah, like, it's a big, like, you'll see it anyway. It's, like, it's a hefty catalog. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the other thing that we did was talk about your terms and conditions instead of you asking the retailer what they wanted and how they wanted to pay and panicking about it. We now have clear, set up terms and conditions. I always want to, like, just caption this with or highlight that when we talk about terms and conditions, it's not like your full legal terms and conditions. You need a solicitor for those, not someone like me that doesn't know law. Sasha used to know law. Yeah, but not enough to do my <laughs> uh, but, um, but yes, you do need someone that like is specific for that because they will talk about things like, you know, stock retention, who pays if that business goes bust and stuff. What we're talking about is what makes it easy on how you can build trust with your buyer. Yeah. Um, it really did make a difference because it was always something I felt as an afterthought that I didn't think was important. And when we kind of spoke together and Teresa was kind of giving me, she has a great template for some T's and C's <laughs> that you need. And it was like, there were things that she was asking me like, okay, but we're going to do pro formas. Like you want people to pay you in advance. And like, when and I was like oh but if there's only a few like, I don't mind making like Steve he can have it like this and Joe can have it like this and then you made a really good point and you were like okay but say you have now 50 stockists and say all of them you've got on these payment plans you're chasing all of them you've suddenly got massive cash flow issues mm. and you've got say you're hiring somebody to help you pick your orders and stuff now you've got to pay them and like it just made me realize that actually it's probably good from the start where possible to get the terms in that make sense to you from day yeah. one. And for sure, like Performa it, or Payment Upfront, it's not like forever with every stockist. You know, you will end up giving credit terms to some stockists for sure, especially bigger retailers that don't do Performa. But, but by having it there, everyone knows the terms. They know what your minimum orders are and what your carriage pays or free shipping is and stuff. It also takes the guesswork out of it for you. Like, you don't ever have to think, oh, make it up on the spot. Like, yeah. you've actually, which is what I used to do. And then, lot. what did I say to that person? <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, crap. Like, I told James this and Jill that. And then, like, they talk at a trade fair and then it's just awkward. Yeah. It's just a lot. Yeah. And it makes it much, much easier and more consistent for the stockist. And you need that to build trust. And I think that uh, one thing I get, I don't think you said this, but I often hear, well, I don't want to have any terms and conditions because it's restrictive. I want to make it easy for the buyer. But actually, what makes it easy for the buyer is if you have clearly defined Clarity. Um, terms on how you trade together. And rules are made to be broken, right? So, like, if you reached out to a stockist and they said, oh, but I would like to try these four cards because we're right before Valentine's Day and I don't have time for anything else, 
you might go, well, that's fine. Like for the first order, I'll just do a smaller order for you. Yeah. And you can make an exception. You can do like a goodwill or whatever it might be. But you have something to refer back to. Yeah. And like, let them come to you with that question. Like, if they want that, they'll ask you. You don't have yeah. to try and second guess what they might want or not want, if that makes sense. For sure. Like, it, it's just, uh, I don't think that this is very nicely plugged in. It's coming back. Sorry, we just had a little blackout on our hands. <laughs> the tech or IT of running a business is not my favourite thing. It's not my favourite <laughs> thing. <laughs> no. So, yes. Um, no, terms and conditions are important. That's just like a thing. It's not predict preventative. It's actually aiding your sales and it helps you build trust. That and was... it can help you sell too. Yeah, definitely, because it's just, it's one less thing to worry about, and it yeah. just makes it very easy. Um, there was just one more thing I wanted to bring up today, and that was just um, how inexpensive it can be to start, because I think a lot of the time, like, I was also thinking, like, for me to do wholesale properly, we just decide that it's going to cost loads of money. I was like, yeah. it's going to be very expensive, and actually, it's not like, okay, we, we work one-to-one, -one, but, like, you've got much cheaper packages, like, people can do a course just to get the knowledge, or, you know, people can just start and do the course later. It doesn't matter. The point is, is, like, even things, like, I said to you, it doesn't like, have I to need... cost anything. Well, yeah, exactly, because I said to you, like, when we said catalogue, I was like, Teresa, I don't, I, I've got, a, I can't, how many should I print? Like, I can't afford to print all these catalogues. And you were like, well, why? You don't need to. Yeah. And if you're going to go to a trade show, so we're talking about doing a trade show next year. Yeah. Then, but, like, you do need to print it. But, like, for now, you don't need to. I would also, yeah, so if you start without, because we were having this discussion, uh, we had food the other day, and we were kind of saying, like, when people should do a trade show or not do a trade show. And mm. I think you gave some really good advice because you were kind of saying, like, it's better that people have done a bit of wholesale first before you start doing a trade show. And I couldn't agree more because, like, now if I'm going to hopefully do one the end of this year, I already have some stockists set up. I understand how wholesale works a bit more. Yeah. I've actually made money from wholesale to then use towards the fee of the, the trade show. Like, it makes a lot more sense. But to start with, what did we pay for? Like, literally, obviously, it had you as a fountain of knowledge. Um, but then, like, everything else, nothing. Like, no, there's nothing. Like, you can literally start. It doesn't have to, apart from time. Yeah, yeah, time. And, you know, for some people, it'll be more time poor than others. Like, but I think if you really want to make it work in the same way that you've made your business work to where it is now, you'll find a way to make the time. So it's just prioritizing it, isn't it? For sure. I, I absolutely think so. And I think wholesale is a another revenue stream for your business. So you cannot expect it to grow without you putting in some time and nurturing it. Uh, it's not going to be instant and you know an easy fix like I think it's really important to point out that if you're planning to start now because we're quite late in the season you know now is a great time to start for you to really kill it early next year yeah I think that like even now I'm not anywhere near reaping the benefits that I hope I'll get by the even the end of next year and I think what you said to me really early on that really helped was you were like don't make the goal how many orders you're getting in at the moment, make the metric of success, how many outreaches you're doing each week, how many emails you're sending each week, how many times you're following through with people, mm. because actually you're not going to feel the benefits of it straight away. Yeah, and like knowing, set yourself up for success so you don't expect everyone to apply and buy from you. Yeah, like don't give up before you've even given chance for it to yeah. really work. I often say that here that people say, oh, but I've been trying so hard. But then when we really break it down, they might have contacted six people once. Uh, but it feels like a lot of hard work. And I completely get it. It feels like a lot of hard work because it took a lot of energy to get to that point. Yeah, exactly that. But, you know, those six people might not even have seen your email. What would be like... At what point could somebody say to you, like, I've really tried wholesale? Like, you have to, like, you, there's about seven, tens of thousands of shops in the UK, right? Like, mm, so to have many. really said that you've tried wholesale means you have to have literally found, spoken to, like, 
at least half of these people. Well, not half, but like, like a lot. lot of people. And I also think that if you say you really tried it, you also have to review what you have tried. So like, you know, like had you contacted all those people with your old catalogue, you might not have had as big of a success as if you did it with your new catalog or, you know, how you communicated before might not have built as much trust with a potential stockist as it would now. So like you you can definitely go back and review. And also things. just because you emailed them once with catalog one that wasn't the greatest catalog, that by all means doesn't mean you can go back in a few months. No, just with, look at Chris Cards. I did that. Like they had an awful catalog and then I didn't, they ordered twice. I didn't speak to them for years. Then I got back in touch and said, hey, remember me? I've got like a proper catalog now. I'd love you to see it. Um, And now they've ordered like quite consistently. I think we've had like a good few orders from them. Mm. And yeah, so like don't feel that just because it's, it's gone wrong in the past that they won't still want to hear from you again and order again because that's just, they will. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Unless they change direction on their shop or something. Which is fine. Or closed or, I mean, like, yeah. Whatever they're <laughs> closed or whatever, like. I would just hate for somebody who's listening, who's doing that wholesale journey, to quit too soon without taking the time to really figure out, like, what you said about analysing what you're doing right, what could work more effectively. So it's not right or wrong, but what could be more effective. Mm-hmm. And then try that. Like, unfortunately, you have to give it a real go before you can decide one way or the other it's not like you're going to get a yes or no anytime yeah for sure for sure so please don't give up like please just keep going yeah for sure and like uh, one thing I thought we'd quickly mention I think I might sneeze um I'm gonna move away (laughs) um is that you know every time we have a call we set homework and stuff some of the homework that Sasha has had has been things like adding a wholesale tab to her website so people know that she is available for wholesale Mm -hmm. Uh, defining your range or creating the catalogue or you know whatever it might be but like it's broken down to steps so if you want to start wholesaling like just break it down so that it doesn't become such a massive task exactly yeah I didn't um, sneeze, but instead I'm crying. <laughs> I think on that note, we should probably end yeah. it, I think Therese might be infectious. <laughs> so, um, where can people find you? Uh, so, we are cheekyzebra.com, and you can find us on Instagram at cheekyzebra.com, but the .com is spelled out, so it's D-O-T-C-O-M. And uh, you can find all my details in the show notes. I, my website is Small Business Collaborative, and if you want to work together, you can apply via my website. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. And we'll see you next Next, week. Next week. Next Monday. Take care. Bye.